We're Clary Hill, and according to what producers say in this area, and from what Frank has said, is uh, this is probably one of the largest contiguous blueberry growing areas in the mid-coast of Maine. In this area and in general, we're looking at the economics of these alternatives uh, to uh, renting bees. It's involved uh, pretty detailed interviews with cooperating producers. The thing that really impressed me about Paul, you know, you know, after interviewing lots of growers, is you're one of the few growers that you know you would encounter both at a, a traditional growers meeting, as well as the organic, you know, growers meetings. Through work that Frank Drummond did and Connie Stubbs, we took in, became more aware of other things such as the leaf cutter bee. Quite a bit of work's been done with that. Mm -hmm. uh, bumblebees becoming available as a commercial option mm -hmm. is a fairly new industry. And over the last 20, 30 years, they've made great improvements in the box they have and in having a consistent quality mm -hmm. when, you, when you purchase them. Um, and then I th again, through our blueberry meetings, uh, everyone is much more of aware of our native pollinators that we have in our fields. Now that we have herbicides, our fields are much cleaner, so we don't have much of a food supply for natural pollinators like we used to have. Uh, mm -hmm. So it becomes more important having spots like the one over there that that, that can house some of our, uh, our natural pollinators mm -hmm. to help us. And then what, last year at the meetings, there was the discussion bringing up that maybe we should look into possibly plant in some areas where we're, uh, that the blueberries aren't growing in, be it the natural border or at least taking care of it to encourage mm. a food supply. But when it comes to planting uh, for, uh, for the native pollinators, we also do not want to be planting something that's going to seed as a weed mm. into our cropland. So mm -hmm. a lot of thought needs to be be given to what might possibly be planted. Right, right. Because there's a lot mm -hmm. of management that goes in keeping this so that there's no, you know, weed, weed problems. That's right. right. <coughs> and, and weeds really uh, decrease our yields. So right. we need to keep the weeds out. Right. And, but on the other hand, we need spots where we can, can grow uh, uh, non-invasive right. plants for the native pollinators. In our state, we have a very active uh, backyard beekeepers, mm. hobbyists, and there's a lot of support. We have a lot of good resources for those people, but for people like myself, I don't have the time <laughs> right. to be doing my own bees. The environment in Maine where you're gonna keep the bees here year round is very challenging, mm. even for the hobbyists, and, mm. and they usually have a uh, a very high fatality rate mm. each year. So, I, for most people like me, it's probably not feasible to to get into doing bees, right? Especially when we can rent them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so a hive yeah. that comes to us from Florida, they've already. Uh, built up the strength of the hive. So when they mm. arrive here, they're, they're ready to work. There's a full workforce, whereas the, uh, the hobbyist hive, when we go into blueberry blossom, they're just starting to build up the hive. So there's not uh, very many workers available in the beginning. By the time the local hive builds up the strength of bees within it, our blueberry blossom is over with. Right. Next thing you had talked about was uh, rented bumblebees yes. uh, in quads. Yes. All right. And so again, uh, Frank Drummond and Connie Stubbs both did a lot of preliminary work and, and different ones of us have tried them. Mm -hmm. And he, even the bumblebee company will, will say that 
their product is not to replace honeybees, but to supplement mm. the uh, honeybees. So most of us that have used bumblebees will, uh, we don't decrease the amount of honeybees we're using. We will just add some bumblebees. Mm -hmm. uh, there is different uh, foraging habits between the bumblebee and in the honeybees, so sometimes when it's in the 50s, which it quite often is here, um, the bumblebees will be more active than the honeybees. Mm. The bumblebee quad has four sections in it, and they say there's like 150 workers in each section, so that would be 600 workers in, in a quad, and uh, but it, with a good with an active honeybee hive, you're going to have 20 to 40,000 workers out in the field. Mm -hmm. So the numbers just don't match up. Right, right. Sometimes we uh, run into other problems, such as maybe the bees aren't going to be available to be rented right when we want them. And so if we got native pollinators in the field, they may do the early pollination if the honeybees are three or four days later than we want them here. With a lot of these alternatives, it's a way to kind of buffer that risk. That's correct. On the grower side, we really depend on the extension mm. to really to, to do the research and then to come back and, and show us the results. Many people are very interested, but they, they need a more information so as they can mm -hmm. make their own decisions right. as to if it's a feasible thing for them to do. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a pretty in-depth analysis of evaluating these uh, budgets for these alternatives. And we'll be, we're also serving growers to develop uh, relative pretty detailed budgets on blueberries themselves. So organic blueberries, and then for traditional blueberries, low input, medium input, and high input uh, growers. And once we've evaluated the economics of the blueberry uh, budgets, we'll be integrating them with taking on these various uh, uh, alternatives, such as creating more pasture strips. So we can evaluate the whole farm economics of growing blueberries in concert with utilizing these various uh, uh, alternatives, such as pasture strips for native bees. I think uh, Probably in the case of blueberries, the question would be how can growers make long-term strategic investments in diversifying their uh, pollinator uh, sources? So, you know, enhancing their native bee population to greater knowledge of what's out there and how they could, you know, best do that for their situation. You know, as well as potentially exploring alternatives such as renting bumblebee quads. Uh, as well as perhaps keeping uh, their own bees. So I think it's probably not a one-size-fits-all, fits all, but it's wise for growers to uh, explore alternatives because if high prices double or triple, um, you, know, you want to be ready and have at least explored those alternatives.